Hi, in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up an eligible vendor to receive 1099s. I'm going to show you how to run the year-end 1099 reports as well as create the 1099s and the 1096. Now before we get started I want to first say welcome back to those customers or subscribers who have viewed many of our videos before and welcome to the, cust or the customers and the subscribers who have yet to ever view a video. Hopefully this video is what you need to help you along your way. And I also want to go ahead and make a disclaimer that the best way to figure out whether or not a vendor is eligible for a 1099 is to receive a form called the W-9 form. This form is, a, is completed and is required by the IRS or actually you receive them from the IRS and it basically indicates what type of entity the company is, whether sole proprietorship, corporation, LLC. It also indicates their address, their tax identification number, and their contact name. Now keep in mind that any company that is a corporation, whether S corporation or C corporation, or any entity or company that is set up as an LLC formed as a corporation, do not receive 1099s. However, there is an exception. The exception is all attorney's fees must get ran through 1099s, regardless of the amount. Now, to get started in QuickBooks, the best thing to do is to go into Edit and Preferences and make sure that you're set up to be able to accept or make the vendors eligible to receive 1099s. So what you're going to want to do is go into the Preferences, select Tax 1099, go into Company Preferences, and it says, do you file 1099 miscellaneous forms? You're going to say yes. And then down here, you'll notice all the boxes that are available on the 1099. You're going to want to make sure that that shows up there. And then you're going to also want to make sure which accounts are associated with these boxes. So let's say you're a real estate agent or a property manager and you collect rents for properties. Whatever account you post that rent to, you're going to want to make sure that that account is picked up here. Now in this area here, these are the thresholds. These are the amounts that the IRS or the government sets. Basically stating that you don't need to send out a 1099 for anything less these amounts. Unless you want to. You can change these thresholds to be $100, $5, $0.50, whatever it is. You would just type over the amount. But these are the actual government regulated thresholds. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we're only going to do subcontractors. So we're going to say that we pay box 7, non-employee compensation, to our subcontractors. Threshold is $600. But we're going to say we're not going to, we're going to go ahead and send out 1099s to anybody who is a $100 threshold or more. Meaning anybody who is $99 or less is not going to get a 1099 from us. And then hit OK. Alright, so then you're going to want to go into your vendor center. Now you can do that by either selecting it here on your home screen, up here at the quick toolbar, or up here in the drop down toolbar, and hit vendor center. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to select this option here on the home page. And here is your vendors. Okay, so you're going to want to select your vendors that are 1099 vendors. And you should know this by, again, the W-9 forms that you've received. And if you're unsure, you can always call the vendor and ask them how their, how their business is set up, whether they're a corporation or not. But again, this is how you're going to want to edit them, and you're going to want to make sure that you have their information available. Now you're going to want to edit the vendor. So you can either do so by hitting right click, edit vendor, or you can go up here to the top right hand corner and hit edit vendor. Once you're into that screen, you're going to want to go into additional information. Make sure that their tax identification number, whether it's their social security number or their EIN number, you're going to want to make sure that that's entered here in the tax ID. You're going to want to put a check mark in the vendor eligible for 1099 box. 
and you're going to want to hit OK. Now that vendor is set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a report for our vendors that qualify for 1099 now that we've actually set up all of our vendors. So we're going to go into vendors, print e-file 1099s. We're going to run a report showing all of our 1099 vendors, which you see here. Some of them are yes, some of them are no. If you want to modify the report to show you only those that are eligible, so you can eliminate the ones that you don't need to send one to, you can do so by going to Modify Report, go to Filters, and look for Eligible for 1099. Okay, and then you're going to only want to select Yes, so that way it only shows those that are eligible. There's your report. If you want, you can print this out. Okay. Again, map your accounts. This is what you would have done in the Edit Preferences screen, but if you decide that you want to do more than one account, let's say um, non-compensation falls into several categories. Go in, up here at the very top, select Multiple Accounts, and select all the accounts that you believe fall under that category. We're just going to go through and we're going to select whatever accounts we feel fall in there. Okay, we're going to hit OK. OK. And we're going to review your, the data that's going to be on the 1099 form itself. So here you'll have the name of the company, their tax identifying number, whether they're social or their EIN number. And then you'll have what box this information is going to be categorized in. So you have non-employee compensation. You're not going to have any. I'm sorry, let me select the right dates. Here we go. So non-employee compensation, you see that there are quite a bit. And then you have those that are uncategorized. Now uncategorized just means that we didn't pull this account and when we mapped out the accounts for 1099. So if you want to figure out which accounts these fall under, you can do so by just double clicking into the amounts and you'll see that this one falls into plants and sod. Okay, this one falls in under inventory asset is the account and you just want to go through and just select delivery fee and patios so you just want to look at exactly what it is is falling underneath what accounts these are falling under and you're going to want to group them in in your mappings now you can do mappings by again going into edit and preferences like we did before here's your mappings or you can go back into vendors print e-file and then do your mappings here we're not going to go through and remap all of these categories for the sake of this tutorial but you do know how to do it okay and once these are all categorized they'll show up in the proper box which means that they will be shown on the 1099 now you might want to make sure that some of these vendors are to receive 1099s and what category or what box they should fall under so that should be something that you talk to your tax professional or your bookkeeper about but for the sake of this tutorial we're going to say that this three thousand nine hundred thirty five dollars is correct Okay. We're going to go back into Vendors Print E-File. And then this is the final step. This is when you would actually create your 1099 forms to be given by January 30th of the following year. 
So you're going to want to print on pre-printed forms, which are, these are the forms that you could buy from the IRS or online or by your Office Depot, Office Max, your Office Supply Store. Or you can file through e-service, which does cost some money, but, I mean, depending on your business, it might be more useful to you. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to print 1099s. You're going to want to make sure that last calendar year. And you're going to want to hit OK. And these are the amounts. Again, this is the total that showed up on that report. Here's the three vendors that showed up on that report as categorized. And if you want to preview your 1099s, you can. Again, this is not going to be on the generated forms, the pre-populated forms. This is the information that's going to print out on those forms. So you have to make sure you have those forms before you send this out to these vendors. And then here you go. You print 1099s, which is what you would give to the vendors. There's going to be a copy A, a copy C, and I believe a copy B. And then you're going to want to print your 1096 forms. Your 1096 form is the summary of all payments that you made to contractors. And this is the form that's sent to the IRS with copies of the 1099s. Once you've printed them, you're done. You've created your eligible vendors, you've run the report, and you've also printed the forms. Hopefully this has helped you. And again, if you have any other questions or would like to see a video, by all means, contact me through YouTube and let me know, and I'll go ahead and see what I can do for you. You can also visit us on the web at www.itsabouttimebookkeeping.com, as well as visit us on Facebook. Come like our page at It's About Bookkeeping. And again, thank you for visiting, and subscribe. Till next time.